All right, this is JPEG to Raw, show number 149 on June 23rd. We're experiencing a few video issues, which both the guest and Tim blame on me. Needless to say, my video is working for the show, but we'll we'll continue, and hopefully video will come in later. If not, this is going to be a, a conversation anyway about Lightroom. And tonight, we're, we're blessed to have, from the UK, on her first podcast, uh, Victoria Bampton, the Lightroom queen. Good night. Uh, g- good evening. Good night. There you go. <laughs> good Show's evening. over. Thank you very much. <laughs> good evening, uh, Victoria. What time is it over there for you? It's like one or two it, in the morning? It's half past one in the morning. Wow. Yeah, so thank you, first off, for staying up this late for us. What we're going to do for people who are watching the show, we're going to have the conversation with Victoria, and then toward the end, before we get to all our admin stuff, we'll let Victoria go so she can get to bed sometime tonight, and she doesn't have to listen to all that stuff. We'll do all that in the back end. But, Victoria, you are called, uh, and you call it yourself. We got your, let me pull it up here. You got the, the web page uh, where you are called the Lightroom Queen. <laughs> how did you how did you come about becoming called the Lightroom Queen? It was a nickname I was given on the forums. I was answering a lot of questions in the very early days of yeah. Lightroom and and I was given the, the nickname the Lightroom Queen and it kind of stuck. Okay. And and you say um you're answering a bunch of questions on the forums on the early days of Lightroom. Did you get started like in the very first version of Lightroom? Yeah, I bu- I bought my first Mac in order to be able to run the the pre-release betas before Lightroom was released. Did I did not know that the the, the, the beta uh, I, I may say I say it different. Did the betas only come out on Mac? Back the then? first the first two betas that were only Mac. Oh, um, oh, I, I think it was that. yeah I think it was June two thousand six. They brought out the first Windows version. Okay, so the version one it came out on both both operating systems, but the beta, yep. but the original betas were only on uh, on a Mac. Yep, Interesting. That's right. I, I guess maybe they were. I don't know if Aperture, which was uh, Apple's product, I don't know if it was out at that time. I think but, it was around a similar time that yeah. it was coming out. Yeah. Maybe that maybe the Adobe developers or they figured that you know there's a large majority, there's a large portion of photographers uh, who use Macs, and that might have been a good place to start. Yeah, and and it's easier to be able to test software on on a single platform to start with, and then and then port it over. Okay. <laughs> Um, so tell us a little bit about how you got into photography and, and are, are you now a professional photographer or a hobby photographer? You know, what is, what is photography to you? Uh, my father was a professional photographer, still is, um, doing weddings and portraits. So I kind of grew up in the family business. Um, and it went from there. I, I still enjoy photography as a hobby, but my background has always been in supporting other photographers rather than doing it myself. Okay. Now, I, I know you're very active in, in a number of areas, uh, especially I, I'm in the fa- one of the Facebook groups that you are, are very active in. Yeah. Um, ha- have you found that being so active in all that, that it's actually cut into the photography hob- hobby? <laughs> yeah, I can't remember the last time I actually got to go and shoot any pictures myself. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that something? Because I've, I've noticed the same thing. I bet if you look at my Lightroom catalog and, and I have a, a smart collection by, that has them by year and then by month, I bet you can tell when I started the podcast because the number of images drastically dropped. Yeah. Yeah. The only time I generally get to shoot these days is either the dogs when I take them out for a walk or, or going away on a holiday. Um, there doesn't seem to be enough time in the rest of the week. <laughs> and I actually have a picture. Of, oh, this is my first time looking at this picture of your dogs. So you can't see what <laughs> I'm looking at. You have two Westies. I do. My little boys. Yes. I grew up with a Westie. Oh. Absolutely. Ours was a girl, Christy, uh, Chrissy. Absolutely loved Chrissy. She was a great dog. Very high strung. Yeah. But a, a great dog, West, uh, Westie. If you don't know what a Westie is, they're... Um, they're a white, they're like a terrier. I think they're a terrier, a white terrier. Yeah. Yeah. And very, and when they're clean and groomed very well, gorgeous little dogs. Yeah. Full of personality. Absolutely. Yes. I got many stories that are meant for another show of yes. me and my dogs. Um, okay. So you, you have become a you, uh, Lightroom queen. You, you're all over the place helping people out with Lightroom. Yeah. But you also have something called Photoshop services. What? What is that? That was 
before I got into Lightroom, I was do doing raw processing for other wedding photographers. Okay. So after I was working for my father, I then started this business, Photoshop Services, doing raw processing and retouching, and then got into, into all the Lightroom stuff. So my business partner, Paul, still runs Photoshop Services now. Okay. It's, um, it's a popular option because uh, wedding photographers are busy. Absolutely. They used to be able to send their files off to the lab and, and just get photos back. Um, and now they can do the same thing with digital. Yeah, absolutely. I know. Uh, are they um, still getting a lot of business doing that? Mm, absolutely. It's, it's become a bigger deal, I think, as photographers have realized there, the, there is that option available. Yeah, what what we have run into, we've run had a few guests like uh, Ryan Brenizer, who does 80, 90 weddings a year, is that mm. some of the some of the really successful photographers have focused their their attention, their their uh, you know what they spend time on, on the things that they're really good at, the things that are going to make yeah. them money. So that, yeah, and then put the other stuff on to some other people. Now, some people won't want to hand editing off to somebody else just because they don't want to, but then others. You know, they, they require light editing and that kind of thing, and they're willing to put that off or the bookkeeping or something else. So I'd imagine that is a business that um, is, is probably pretty healthy and, and continue, will continue to be for a while. Yeah, we, we don't try and do the artistic side of it. We right. leave, we get them built to a really nice standard in their preferred style. So each photographer has their own style, which we match, and then they can go back and do the artistic stuff afterwards. So they're still they still have that creative control, but they're losing all of the boring bit, um, so that they can focus on the things they really enjoy doing. Yep. <coughs> all right, very good. Well, you know we ha the we had you here tonight. Um, one, we just we Tim and I have had a great time talking to you in the pre-show as we fought through these video issues. Um, but we that you, we wanted to talk to you about Lightroom and specifically Lightroom Six. Yeah. So I've upgraded. I think Tim, you've upgraded Lightroom Six. Absolutely. If, if I haven't upgraded, if someone hasn't upgraded to Lightroom 6, mm -hmm. what are the new things in Lightroom 6 that would be compelling for them to go ahead and, and make that change and upgrade to Lightroom 6? It depends on what they're looking for. Face recognition is, is the big one, um, which for a lot of amateur photographers who are shooting friends and family, that, that's a really useful feature. and saves a lot of time. Um, one of my favorite new features is the photo merge for HDR and panorama. That saves so much time trying to take pictures off to Photoshop and back. Um, and it's all non-destructive, so you can edit them um, without losing quality, which is a big bonus. And, and the GPU feature was the other big headline, and that's had a few teething troubles, but, uh, but that has, has a lot of potential. I think it, I read an uh, article, I think it was from like, from Adobe, where they were saying this is their first for, foray into the GPU for Lightroom. They've done it in other products, but this is their first one in Lightroom. And, you know, it's only in the develop module. Is that right? Yes, that's right. And only certain areas of the develop module at the moment. Okay. And, and their intention is that's not the stopping point. That is the starting point. And it will yeah. get more and more, GP, the GPU added to more and more features down the road. Yeah, the, there's a lot of potential there to really speed up the preview on the screen um, and to make things a lot smoother. But there's also an awful lot of potential for problems. So they've hit issues with buggy drivers and that kind of thing. So it's going to take them a little while just to be able to iron those things out and then they can start moving into other areas. Yeah, and I'm gonna, I'll ask you some questions and I know you're not an Adobe employee, so you may not have some of these answers. But like you know, with, with Lightroom five and I believe four, they did a public beta. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea why they didn't do that here with this one? There's there's a few reasons. Um, for one, it's a lot more complicated now since you've got sync involved. That people would want to be able to up, update their main working catalog because yeah. they'd want to be able to trial some of these new features. But they never allowed that with the betas because it's dangerous. You can break a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, so it's added a lot more complications and it took some of the fun out of it as well. It took some of the fun out of launch day. It, it saved a few of the headaches as well, but you know, there are pros and cons to it. There yeah. was, there was an awful lot of time and an effort that goes into preparing a beta and um, getting that all up and running and then integrating all of the feedback, which delays the 
shipping time. And That's they true. wanted to get it out the door so that people could start using it, particularly with the new um, Retina iMax. Mm -hmm. The new GPU feature is a huge advantage on there when it works really well. Um, so they didn't want to hold that back. Is there, is there a general rule or uh, some, uh, some kind of common theme that you've seen where the GPU does work well or doesn't work well? Yeah, really high-res screens, it generally works much better. Okay. Um, that's where you really start to see the advantages. And it needs to be a card that was built within the last two, maybe three years. Um, older cards have a lot more issues. Any difference between like an AMD uh, type video card or an NVIDIA video card? Uh, they are having some issues with AMD drivers at the moment, um, yeah. which I think they're still working on. Um, some of these things are going to have to wait for the graphics card manufacturers to actually go back and fix some of their bugs yeah. so that they can get it all working smoothly. And, and some of the advances we think we're going to see down the road and where they use the GPU in more cases – do you think that's going to be like a version 7 or is it going to be a dot release within uh, six, uh, um, version 6? I think it depends on how long it takes them to get all of these bugs ironed out first. They'll, they'll need to get this staple first. Yeah. Um, uh, it, I would assume it'll probably be 7 before we see any significant leaps forward. Yeah, I, I, would, I would think so, that, that you know, they're going to do minor stuff between here and there. But each major release will probably have a much bigger, um, you know, bring in more stuff from from the GPU. So I got yeah. Lightroom actually pulled up now. So as we're talking about it, but I know you can't see what I'm showing. Uh, but instead of just showing me all the time, this will be a better thing to look at. And are there any specific cards that they're recommending, yeah. or just something um, released in the past year or two? The, yeah, basically the last year or two with at least two gig of RAM. Because currently my system, I am not running a video card because I never needed it. I don't play mm -hmm. games on my computer. So when I built it, I was like, I'll just use the motherboard graphics. It worked fine with Lightroom. But now yeah. that Lightroom uses it, I'm probably going to consider putting one in. Probably yeah. by, probably when I upgrade to Windows 10, the same time I'll probably uh, put in a new graphics card. Yeah, that sounds like a good plan. Well, you know, I know some people who, like you, Tim, who are using... Um, the motherboard graphics or maybe on a laptop where it has a weaker graphics card, you know, those may be having issues. But they, you can turn off the graphics card feature, right? Yes. So if you – if you, sorry, Go ahead. Go on. <laughs> I was going to say if you notice that it, like, seems slower for you under Lightroom 6 than it did Lightroom 5, that may be one of the first things to try is turn off the, the graphics card. Absolutely. And there are certain areas where you'll see it being slower. For example – um, the loading time in develop is slightly slower with it turned on because it takes extra time for them to pass the data off to the GPU. So if moving from picture to picture to picture to picture in develop is your priority, you're still better off with it turned off. Oh, I did not know that. Because mm. for me, uh, what I noticed before was when I moved from picture to picture in develop, that it, it would take, I'm going to say a second, but it probably was milliseconds. It would take you know, some time for it to come in and be crisp, crisp and clear before yeah. I would want to edit it. And it seemed like the longer I worked in Lightroom, the slower that got. And then I could you know, close out, come back in, and I'd have full speed again. And I'd have to go through this process you know, multiple times on a large edit. But that sounds frustrating. It does. But I haven't noticed as much of that with Lightroom 6. It seems to be faster for me and I haven't got to the point where it's degraded enough I wanted to reboot I'm oh, not reboot but restart the program good yeah they're still working on all of these issues <laughs> all right well we've beat you to death on the GPU but <laughs> I also you know so this one thing I, I didn't mention this is the first version of Lightroom that's part of Creative Cloud right officially it's the first one that's branded as Creative Cloud Lightroom yeah. 5 was available as part of as a photographer plan right yes if you got it before, if you got the full Creative Cloud, was it part of that too? Lightroom 5 was. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It just had the old official Lightroom 5 name rather than being called Lightroom CC. Yeah. And now, of course, you, I mean, you can still get it uh, as a standalone product. Mm hmm. The main difference is they can add new features to the subscription version that they can't add into the perpetual license. Oh, that's, that's what I was going to ask. Yeah. So that that's how they're gonna 
force people to upgrade later on? Because I was wondering if they're going to just continually update, why would you purchase the creative? Now, I, I have the creative cloud, and so does Mike. I only have the photographers. Mike has the full version. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, like, what kind of things would you say they would add only to the creative cloud version? Well, they've just added in 6.1, they've just added a new dehaze slider, and they've added new whites and black sliders into the local adjustments. So we don't know what else they might add, but those things aren't available in the perpetual license set. Really? So a 6.1 update is not... So, so Adobe came out with Lightroom 6, what, a month and a half ago, and already they updated it, and some of those things are being left out of the current version. Now, what yeah. if you were... All right, so the question, I guess, is what if you were to buy the standalone version six months from now, would you be getting this, the Lightroom 6.0? Yes. So you'll wow. still get you'll still get your bug fixes and and that kind of thing and the new camera support, but they can't add new features to the perpetual license until they do a major upgrade. Where is the dehaze? It's in the effects panel. Oh, there it is. Yes. Well, I I am yeah. glad I have the uh, the the subscription model. Not. The ten dollars a month is well worth it. In my it's mind, it's a bargain. I, it really yeah, is. I agree completely. I was I was absolutely shocked when they told me that that was the price they were planning on doing it for. That is a bargain, no question. Yeah, because when it, when they came out with the original one, I was like, I, I really didn't want to. I don't use it enough, or definitely not the other programs to spend forty dollars a month. Um, yeah. But ten dollars, yeah, that's that's well worth it. Yeah, absolutely. So I, obviously, I'm on the latest version. I I had not gone down there and check that the image i have pulled up this image is nothing special for anybody who's watching video just the one i had pulled up in this um in this catalog and it definitely does not need the dehaze thing but is is right here under the vignetting and grain and you can add or subtract haze again not that this image <laughs> needs it huh interesting i can't wait to use it on i have some photos <laughs> that i can use it on yeah it works particularly well if you've got um, a cityscape with lots of smog or that kind of thing. Um, it works really well on those pictures. You completely distracted me while you two were talking about something else. I was playing <laughs> with the dehaze thing. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> uh, okay, so one of the top things, the first thing you mentioned on the list of improvements was our list of uh, new additions was face recognition. Mm. And can you talk a little bit about the face recognition? Yeah, the basic idea is is when you switch to a folder um, in which there are faces, it goes through and indexes that folder. So it's looking for all of the different faces in the pictures and it gets it right most of the time. It misses a few, it gains a few extra things that aren't faces, but it saves time. And then it goes through, you can start naming some of the people who are in the pictures and it looks at their, their facial features and it tries to guess the names of other people. So you, um, it saves you going through and keywording them all individually. It, it suggests the name and you can just confirm or say, no, that's the wrong person and give them the right name. But it's, uh, it's quite good fun. It's a bit more fun than keywording apart from anything else. Yeah, and I... What am I doing wrong? I'm... I am on an image, and mm -hmm. I'm saying I'm going to people, photo people, and then find similar faces is grayed out. I'm in the library module. Do I need to be in develop module? Uh, so are you in the, you're looking at the people view. You can see um, named people and unnamed people sections. No, I'm in the, I'm in the grid view. Okay. On the toolbar in the grid view, uh, you should see the. Grid, loop, compare, survey, and then people views. If you haven't got the T toolbar showing, press T. E. T. Yep. People. I see it. It's a little face down there. That's the one. Find faces. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully this doesn't kill the processor as I'm also trying to stream <laughs> right now. So there's not a whole lot of images in, in this catalog, which is intentional. Um, but I have, I have it pulled up now and I only found three faces and there's, there's more faces than that. 
So one of the things I've run into, and I wish it had the other faces down below. How do I, how do I make it rescan again? You can't. Oh. That's, <laughs> that's, that's one of the most popular feature requests around the, um, around the feature. Here we go. I've already found a problem. I, and I haven't got to my problem yet. <laughs> these, okay, these images I must have tagged. I took these images out of a current catalog and put them in this catalog just for the show. And they, because mm -hmm. these already have names. Well, that's good. Yeah. I'll save you a job. Yeah. And, they say, <laughs> and, they're, and they're the right names. And I, um, maybe I should. Well, I, I hope if you put the names in there, they're correct. Yeah. <laughs> um, but here's, so here's the thing. I got, it's showing you three. You said I can't rescan. I can if can I go to an image though and force it to have a people name? Tag it with yeah. a person? So open the image in loop view. In loop view. And if you're going straight there from people view, the draw face tool should already be open. If not, it will be on the toolbar. And then you can literally draw a square around a person's face and you can give them a name. Just like you would on Facebook. Okay. Yep, I just did. Very good. Very good. So now let's go back to the people view. And there's Craig. Yep, I have him. So one of the things I did, so let me tell you what I, where my problem was, is mm -hmm. I had, I decided I, I want to start off with, a, uh, instead of the whole catalog, I have one catalog with over 200,000 images in it. I want, yeah. to, I want to start off with just uh, a smaller collection. So I found a folder that had, I think had 10,000 images in it. And I don't know, maybe that was still too many. But, you know, 10,000 images. And I did find faces and let it run through its thing. And then I started, um, you know, tagging people. And I would drag them up, you know, as it, as it found some uh, faces. I would, uh, and maybe it gave the wrong name or whatever. But I would drag them up because I like that. That was really easy to just drag the little faces up to the ones I've already named. But, yeah. So over time, I had, I think it was three rows of faces. Yeah. And then as I'm, you know, I'm clicking on thumbnails to add to somebody, and I come down several, several more rows looking for that same thing. I go back up, you know, scroll back up to drag them to one of the name faces. I now only have a row and a half of, of thumbnails instead of the full three rows. It lost somehow half of or so of the the, the images that I've tagged with a name. And they weren't just, you didn't just need to scroll up or down again? No, I tried that. I even came out of the program, went back in. It was just like they were, they were gone. I, I, you know, the images, of course, are still on my computer, but the tagging of them was, was no longer there. And so I said, well, I must have done something wrong. So I tried it again, and this time with a much smaller, with a thousand image about, um, directory and the same thing happened there that's a weird one i haven't yeah. heard any other reports of that oh great um <laughs> the, <laughs> you're special um one of the things that can can cause that is selecting a different folder or okay. selecting a subfolder because the view only shows you the pictures in the current selected folder or collection okay. so that can trip people up but, but you if, might have a bug there if i'm in the grid view is there mm -hmm. a way to look at an image and see who it's been tagged with as a person? Yeah, if you switch to the loop view, okay. it'll show you all of the little squares around their faces and the little names above. How do I get to the loop view? Just the E. E, yeah. So that one's not named. That one's not named. Okay, so I'm on. I'm in the loop view, and it's actually not showing me that. Have you got the little draw faces tool active? Yep. Okay, nope. Now I did. Okay, so if I'm in the loop tool, I can then go there and do it. But there's no way, like in the gr grid tool. No, not in the grid. grid you can't uh, grid view. I is that field a searchable field? If I'm doing a, like a, a search, which field? The, the name. The, the people name. Yeah. Yep, it's just a keyword like any other. Okay. So you can use your metadata filters or you can filter it from the keyword panel. Okay. So I, what I need to do is try and, re, I'm not going to do it tonight, but try and repeat that error that I had and pay particular mm. attention to see if I have moved a directory or something like you said to see if that caused it. I'm not going to go through and do um, 
a thousand of them before I have the air again. I'm going to start with a smaller group and maybe try and force that issue, like you said, is move around. Yeah. And see if I can come back. And if you if you can re- if you can repeat it, report it on the Photoshop.com feedback site because that's where they're gathering all of the bug reports. Okay, good. Uh, and Tim, I, I'm not watching chat, but if you if there's any questions there you want to feed in, feel free to do that. Actually, I wasn't looking over there. Oh. I see there's three questions. Poof. <laughs> Did you want to go to one of them or you want me to keep going? When I upgraded to CC6, it messed up my plugin extras like Shootproof and DxO. Now there are photos in my catalog that Lightroom says can't find photo. Now I can't delete them and I cannot edit them. That's from Dean Stone. That shouldn't have been related to plugins. Um, the photo should still be on the hard drive. <laughs> Um, but if they've been moved or renamed, that would cause Lightroom to say it can't find them. I haven't heard other reports of files going missing as a result of the upgrade. Yeah, I don't I don't think I had anything missing. And that's the only time I've ever seen photos go missing is if I change the directory or if I change the name. Yeah, a lot of people tend to do that with just not realizing that the photos aren't actually in Lightroom. They'll rearrange just them. Linking, they'll right. t- They'll tidy up their hard drive and, and whatever else and then complain that Lightroom can't find the photos anymore. And, you know, that's going to cause problems. Okay, another question is, uh, silly question, but I have to ask. Uh, oh, that's, I think like that... Like the per- question... Okay, go ahead. Oh, no, that's, uh, I guess, no, he's, I gather uh, Alicia's is actually answering his question, so... Yeah. I think the question oh, well, below that, uh, using yeah. the 2001 iMac, is it better to not use the GPU? 2011, not 2001. Yeah, 2000, 2011. Um, you're going to have to try it with and without, but I would say probably you're better off without just because it's that little bit older. Um, that's, what, a four-year-old like four card now, old, isn't it? Yeah, it's probably not got the power to be able to offer any advantages. Okay. One of the things that I know you do, Victoria, and Tim does, but I don't do, is that when you can when you import your images... You convert to DNG. Mm. And I know Tim and some other people have experienced this, that the importing of DNG and the conversion or that process is actually slower with Lightroom 6. Yes. Is that something yes. you've experienced? Um, I haven't actually sat down and timed it because when I'm importing pictures, I usually walk away from it. Um, but there have been a few reports on that. They've split the process, so it now <coughs> imports the photos onto the hard drive and then runs the conversion, which is supposedly safer, but does seem to be taking a bit longer. Quite a bit longer, I would say. Probably probably yeah. double the amount of time uh, from what I what I recall before I, I upgraded to Lightroom 6. Yeah. So I'm sure well, Adobe's I'm, aware of that. Is that, and, and they're probably fighting the battle between, like you said, the safer solution, you don't want to damage people's photos, and then the speed. So do you, do you see a fix on this coming i haven't heard anything but there has been quite a lot of feedback about it so i wouldn't be surprised to see some changes there okay good yeah and if i remember correctly first it imports it and then it does after the import is done it actually does two separate processes on mine it'll have two bars going one is the converting converting to dng because i use dng which mike does and i keep trying to convince him and then the <laughs> other one i think is it's trying to get the facial recognition at the same time. So it just, it's taken a long time going through the pictures, but to the point where I get up and I walk away and I come back. Yeah, that's probably better for your sanity. Um, (laughs) It's doing, it'll do um, any smart preview conversion and the face recognition and the DNG conversion all at the same time because it can do it on, on a single file read, which again is supposed to be a speed, say time saving thing, but, you know, it's, it taxes most computers. Yeah, and my computer's relatively fast. I mean, I built this probably uh, six months ago, so it's pretty high end as, as far as I'm concerned. So yeah, I, I that's think we've still got a few optimizations yet to do. Yeah, I've, I, that's what I'm hoping for. Yeah, it's it's a dot zero release or dot one release. There tends to be issues at this stage that get worked out over the next few bug releases. There's a question out in chat um, from Rick who says he, he doesn't see the dehaze tab. And I asked him which version he's on. And, of course, he said CC. And I'm looking at mine. And the 
I'm on the CC also, and I see mm-hmm. t- 2015.1 release. Is that yeah. version 6.1? So, yes. so Rick, look in, in the about, and then um, about, and then Adobe, I think it is. About, yeah, or uh, about help and, system info will give you the same information. Right. Yeah, help. And, is, are you, is he on Mac or is he on PC, I guess? Because uh, mine is help, then uh, about Adobe Photoshop, and it's two th- 2015.1 release, camera raw 9.1. Mm-hmm. That's what you want to check. And if you're not, then and you're on CC, there should be an upgrade, an update for you. Yeah. All right. Um, you, since you deal with you deal with a ton of questions from from Lightroom, what are some of the most common things that people, some, most common problems that people run into? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, <laughs> the biggest one has to be I've deleted all my pictures. That's not a good one. Um, where they assume that the pictures are inside Lightroom, so they they have a clean up and they delete everything off their oh. hard drive. And then, yeah, I, uh, that oh, that gives me nightmares. The number of people who I talk to who do that is, yeah, awful. And the trouble is, because you can get into Lightroom quite quickly, you don't actually have to kind of learn how it works behind the scenes, and then people get into trouble. Which is why I did my free quick start guide on my on my website is, is you can download and it just steps you through all of the basics to avoid the main problems. Where, and where is that on your website? There, there's a link on the homepage and I think it's lightroomqueen.com slash quick start. It'll be under books as well on the menu. We will have it in the show notes. Under books. Yeah, under books, it is, yeah, that's it. I was going to say you should make a frequently asked questions and you already have a book on that. (laughs) I do. I knew that already. (laughs) (laughs) I've spent the last two years rewriting it. I only launched it a couple of weeks ago and it's had fantastic reviews so far. So let's hope everyone buys it. (laughs) So uh, those people who are deleting all the photos, I, I take it they don't have a backup they can go back to? Yeah, that's the scary thing. And then you're into trying to help them rescue Lightroom's previews and they're never as good a quality as the originals. And yeah, I, I think that's the I worst you, thing that can possibly happen. I, I know a number of photographers who uh, who love Lightroom and then others who love Photoshop and they won't use Lightroom. What mm. I what I say is, look, if you're going to use, if you, you're going to bring those photos into your computer one way or the other. I the yeah. reason, One of the reasons I love Lightroom for importing my images, and I do a lot of my editing in Lightroom too, is because Lightroom gives me the ability to, as the the, the photos are coming off the card, to send it to two places. Mm. One is on my local computer, and then that second copy allows you to take that second copy on import and put it somewhere else. And I put that on a server that's running Crash Plan, so it's not even done download the images off the card before Crash Plan sending it up to the cloud. So. Yeah. By the time I'm done with all that, I've got it already in three places. Is I do exactly the same thing. Awesome. So if in that case, if that person had deleted their images, and hopefully they didn't delete the second copy, but they deleted those images, they could go back to the second copy, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, they could. All right. So that's... Unfortunately, the people who tend to do that don't <laughs> generally have backups. That's true. Uh, Mike, I think you're the only person I know that uh, actually imports to two separate locations. Victoria just <laughs> said she did. Yeah, well, I did, although, I did. Uh, you two, well, prior to you, Victoria, you were the only person I meant that I ever knew. You don't do that? No, no. Oh, my. I'm telling you. I, tr- Ooh, I trust favorite. myself. I trust myself. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not just you you need to trust, it's the hard drive. Exactly. Well, the hard drive it, it, dies. It, it backs up every night to my, uh, to my server anyway, so I, I'm counting on that. So the worst Fair thing enough. that's going to happen is if I didn't cover, copy it that day, I don't uh, wipe out my card probably for a couple of days anyway. So I still would have it on my card. I think my f- – go ahead, Victoria. No, go on. My fear <laughs> is that something will happen before between now and then, and I won't be able to get that done. And I just like the idea that I'm instantly getting it off somewhere else. And, yeah, yeah. it increases storage a little bit, but you were going to make that – you didn't even make a backup somewhere anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I probably should. I mean, it's easy enough to do it. I probably should do it. I haven't, Lord knows I have enough hard drives, so it's not like I don't have the storage. Not quite as much as you, Mike, but uh, quite a bit. Well, you know, and, and once after Victoria gets off, we're going to talk a little bit about my 
storage uh, thing that I'm doing because it was just bore, bore uh, storage. She doesn't need to stay for that. But okay, so that's a pretty bad one that you mentioned. Somebody's deleting their images. Any? Yeah, that's scary. I don't. I don't want you to give a top ten. We don't have time for that. But uh, maybe another one that's a, a a big one that people a then, common mistake yeah. that's easy yeah, to the avoid. Next, the next one in line is people not backing up the catalog. <laughs> so <laughs> that would probably yeah, scare to, me more back, than anything. Yeah, we're back to backups again. Yes. Um, just people who who don't back up the catalog and then suddenly wonder where. You know, they move to a new computer and wonder where all their pictures have gone, and um, or they delete pictures out of their catalogue because they're tidying up and then can't get them back, and they've lost all of the work they've done on them, and they might have spent weeks working on a particular job, and you know that's a that's a bit of a nightmare. Not quite as disastrous, but yeah. it's not something you fancy doing. I, I think the, the catalogue not being backed up, and if you ever lost that. I think about the work I've done, and, and I tag every picture uh, uh, when I import it right away. Because if I don't do it when I do at that point, I'm not going to do. Because I probably have pictures going back to uh, probably the early 2000s that I'm like I still haven't gotten to them, and, mm -hmm. and that's why that's why I loved Lightroom, and that's the reason I switched over. Because I used to use Photoshop with Bridge, and Bridge yeah. was okay, but that it never satisfied me what I was doing within that. And I yes. think before that I was probably using Photoshop Elements, and that did, that wasn't compatible with anything, which really drove me nuts. So I really enjoyed going to Lightroom, and I tell everybody, tag it now because you're not. I can find pictures at any time, and it is so easy. Even though I will say I started backing up my pictures to uh to the the Google Photos. Uh, I don't know oh, if yeah. you've, I I tried it, and uh, the. Talk about the facial recognition. My daughter is three years old, and it found her face from when she was a month old. And wow. it said it put uh, her name with all the pictures. And that blew my – I mean, you think about it, what it was, and that just blew my mind that I could find her picture from that. Yeah, absolutely. So they got some serious uh, facial recognition going on. Yeah. Now, if we could just convince Adobe to buy their technology. Yeah. Yes, yes. That would be nice. <laughs> But it sounds like the most common, uh, and I don't know if you have another top one that's really big, but at least the top two there were around the same issue, backing up, which mm. you, you know a lot of photographers do a great job with it, but there's a lot of them. I see it almost every every month in one of the groups I'm in that some photographers lost a photo shoot here or a photo shoot there or a wedding or something like that. And yeah. you, know, you spend all this money and time and effort on your photography. Don't skimp out on the backups. Oh, I agree completely. That's just my lesson, my little lecture yeah. there. Okay, so with uh, talking about the negative there, let's go to maybe a positive, and that is any little hidden gems that, are, you know, it's like your favorite little thing to use with in, in, in Lightroom that the majority or a lot of people don't know about or seldom use. Yeah, quick develop. Um, you, f you When you first look at the quick develop panel in in the library module it looks like it just does really rough adjustments but it comes into its own if you've edited a load of pictures and then you think actually they're all a little bit too dark or they all need a little bit more contrast if you were to go into develop and you sync to setting across it would set them all to the same value whereas if you use quick develop it adds a certain amount so if one photo is minus two exposure and another one is zero and another one is plus two and you hit the button in the quick develop panel it'll add a stop to each of those settings so the minus two will become minus one and the zero will become plus one and the plus two will become plus three which is really useful when you want to adjust a whole load of pictures you've already edited you know i knew that but i, I this is one of those ones that i seldom remember and go back and use but yeah. you, like you said, it can be very helpful because for me, I may be doing a sport thing where a lot of my images are the same. I make these adjustments, but then you're right. I might want to add a little bit of clarity to them or add a little bit of exposure, take a little bit off. And I have to do what you just said, go back into the develop module and do them one at a time or sync groups where I could have yeah. done it through there. I, I, I knew that, but I, I never think about it. It's one of those that's just so easily forgotten. Yeah. Very good. Okay, that's a good one. Now, in the develop module, and let me ask you about your workflow. In the develop module, are, is it in any particular order? Does Adobe put this the items in order, and they say that you need to work, you should work down the flow this way, or do you have a specific way that you recommend you should do this part first and that part second? And, and 
your adjustments? Generally from the top down, okay. particularly in the um, basic panel, um, I would generally get the exposure in the right ballpark, then start at the top and go right balance, exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites and blacks. The whites and blacks, if you shift double click on the whites and blacks labels, the names, it'll set them to their auto settings. And for those two particular sliders, that often works really well. Rap, I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> did you know that, Tim? No, I did not. I just did it on this image here. I'd... It's a handy little trick. Yeah. Whereas the normal auto button works on the entire picture, if you shift double click on the label, it works on the basis of the existing settings you've already applied to the picture. So you'll get a different result either way. Oh, that's a good one right there. So you said whites and blacks. Would that also work on shadows and highlights? Yep. It works on the others as well, but it works particularly well on whites and blacks. Okay. Huh. Dang. You know, often I do hit the auto and it doesn't get what I want, but it gets me close and I can then edit off of that. So yeah. it, it's almost like sometimes I want to try the auto just to see, and hey, sometimes it gets it right. You can move on from there. Sometimes it gets you close enough, then you can edit. Sometimes it's horribly wrong. <laughs> and you got to <laughs> you know, do the edit yourself. But yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a neat trick. You writing these down, huh, Tim? Um, I'm paying more attention right now, sadly. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is... Because I'm, look, I'm looking at Lightroom on my other screen, sadly. That's what yeah. I'm doing at the same time. I don't know about <laughs> Tim, but I've used Lightroom a lot, and I've already learned a few th new things tonight. So thank you That's for that. That's why I, when Lightroom 6 came out, I actually bought the book, uh, Classroom in a Book, just to give myself a refresher, because I've read it, I've done it, and then I stopped using something, and I totally forgot about it. So you need my book instead. It's full we of do. these little tiny tips and tricks. Yes, you're right. You're right. <laughs> and, and that is uh, the, oh, where do I have it? Oh, I had, a, I had it already. I just need to pull it. That is your free light room. Does it say free light room quick start e-tips? Uh, e no, you want the main FAQ book. Okay. The main, the well, missing that, FAQ. That is. That's, I put that one in the chat uh, before. Adobe. Yes. Adobe Lightroom CC6, the missing fact. There we go. Yes, there the one. Go. Yeah. And can I get that it's on? It's full. Go, ahead. go on. Can I get that on Amazon? You can. They're a bit slow about shipping at the moment. I've heard. Uh, but you can get it on my website as well. Okay. If I get it on your website, are you personally going to send it to me? I am. Well, I'm going to, if it's a paperback, I'm going to get the, my printers in the US to send it to you. But yeah, oh, I deal with yeah. all the orders. So I can get the ebook um, or a, I would want the ebook. Yeah. Yeah. So awesome. when you buy the ebook, you get the PDF, the EPUB, and the Kindle version all in one. Oh, and I, I like you got a picture in here with the uh, the workflow editing your photos, the yeah. whole chart, the flow chart. There's I loads like that. of those. There's loads of those little flow charts and diagrams and all sorts of weird and wonderful stuff through there. Well, oh, I, I like that. I know I'm going to be buying it. We may buy an extra to give away if you don't mind. Cool. Yep, I'd be happy to <laughs> donate one if you'd like one. All right, well, we can talk uh, another time about that. Yeah, that yeah, sounds cool. good. I, well, I'm going to buy one for me because that's – I use Lightroom <laughs> all the time, and you already given me two free. Now if, if I know i got to buy it. Oh, it's a pleasure. Okay, so with all that, and, and I don't want to keep you too much longer because we're coming up on the hour and we still got some other stuff to do. What, yeah, um, sure. what do you <laughs> think is missing – when you look at Lightroom 6, and it's come a long way since the early days, what is, what is missing that you would like to see in a future version? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think I would really like to see them go through and just do a bug fix release. Just go through and tidy up all of the little loose ends and bits and pieces that have never quite been finished and just really make it a really solid performance release. Yeah, I think that, that. that would be my absolute number one. Okay. Yeah, and, and just the speeding up, I would love to see that. Yeah. Yeah, I think they've got a really, really solid feature set there. And I think if there was this, there's little details like you can't search on all, on all of the different metadata fields. Little details like that could really speed up people's workflows. So I think that would be my my top feature. What What about uh, having the the catalog on a server? You think they'll ever do that? Yeah. I I would like to see it, but that would be a huge rewrite. I think they're more likely to go down 
some kind of um, network route like they've done with Lightroom Mobile. I think they're more likely to tie it in with that. Okay. Well, one thing I would love to see on the Lightroom Mobile is the ability to keyword. Oh, uh, me too. I, I yes. Can't, I mean, I, I am not going to edit pictures on an iPad. I am I, for... <laughs> I'm just not going to do that. But if I was sitting somewhere, would I start keywording pictures? Absolutely. I could see myself get, sitting on a couch with that. You've got to get everyone to vote on it on the feature request forum because, uh, because they do listen to the top votes. God, she, that, that's, you remember, um, to, well, I don't know if you know what she's talking about, Tim, but Nikki, who's uh, in our group, as an admin in our group, she had some feature. I don't remember exactly what it was, but she posted it in our group. Hey, go over here and vote it up. It was something mm. that was that she liked. I had never actually been to that site before, where you can vote those things up. So I went and helped her and voted voted it up. But that's a that's a good thing. If you have a feature request that you that you want, you know, post it in our in our Facebook group and ask people to help you vote it up. Yeah, yeah, and uh, that, top, that would be the, the best. Yeah, the top three this time were the main features this time. So face recognition, um, being able to brush away gradients, and Oh, I think HDR was the other top feature request, and they all made it into this release. So it definitely makes a difference. Wow. Uh, Dean asks, and I, I think you mentioned this before, but maybe real quick. Dean asks, the difference between Lightroom 6 and Lightroom CC? Just that they can add new features into Lightroom CC, and they can't add them into Lightroom 6. And obviously, you've got Photoshop in, Lightroom, in the CC version, and you've got mobile in the CC version. But those are the main differences. Uh, all right, thank you. And you just brought up HDR uh, there. I have used the HDR. I I shoot some HDR, and mm -hmm. because I use Photomatics, the to me the HDR is still lacking in Lightroom. It's good for a quick little thing, <laughs> but it's it's not as good as what you can do in in Photomatics. It it depends on what you're wanting to do right. because uh, a lot of people look at the new HDR feature and say, where are the sliders? There aren't any sliders. Yeah. So they don't realize that they, that Adobe have kind of separated off into two separate stages. You merge to HDR and then you edit it in the develop module. But if you're looking for that HDR style, that really stylized look, yeah. dedicated HDR software is still better at that. But if you're looking for a natural result, then Lightroom does a really good job. And, and that's what I noticed too. I, I did some um, HDR in there. And if you're looking for the more natural look, it did do a pretty good job with that. Mm. Uh, I, it just depends on what you're looking for. Yeah, I, I'm still a big fan of Photomatics. On the Photo Merge thing, I have not tried that yet. Have you done any uh, Photo Merge yet? What, the panoramas? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, the, the panorama. Yeah. Yeah, it works quite well. Um, I like the fact that the picture is still fully editable after it's merged. So you can still adjust the white balance. You can, you've can you still got the full flexibility of the raw file. Um which is a huge plus, and you haven't yeah. got to keep all of the separate files around. So that's almost kind of like it pulled right out of Photoshop because Photoshop did that already. With a Photoshop, uh, Photoshop had to merge it to a 32-bit file, and there are some extra advantages to doing it directly from the raw files. Yeah, uh, like you can change the white balance on it, which you right. can't do with as great a flexibility when you've done it from Photoshop. Does that mean that Photoshop was a destructive um, edit when you did that? Yeah, it had to be demosaic'd first and it had to have some base settings applied to it before you could merge them in Photoshop, whereas Lightroom's working on the demosaic'd raw data. So it hasn't had the white balance applied, it hasn't had anything like that applied to it before you start editing. All right. I'm going to have to try that in, in, uh, in Lightroom then. I haven't yeah. tried it yeah. yet. I am too. Yeah, give it a try. Well, you know, we're coming up on the end here for you, Victoria. I'm, I'm so uh, thankful that you've spent the time with us tonight. And sorry our video never got to work. Uh, you got oh, to see me at least a little bit here if you're watching the live show. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm watching you on YouTube at the same time. <laughs> so you got, to, you got to see me a little bit there. It, uh, and I think you got to see Tim. We just, uh, yeah. we uh, everybody else didn't get to see Tim. This was more of a conversation anyway, and, you know, we appreciate you staying up so late with us and giving us these tips. I'm going to go out and get me a copy of that book. Um, oh, it's a pleasure. Yes. But what, what is, so what's next for, for Victoria? What can we um, expect to see next? 
I haven't a clue. I'm 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 working on <laughs> being well, that's honest. I, I don't know. I'm I'm working on getting the book out the door and working on the marketing and trying to get Amazon to ship it properly and and all of that stuff. And then and then I'm debating it might be a book on the the more artistic side of editing in Lightroom. Ooh. It might be a book on Photoshop. I don't know. I'm I'm open to suggestions. Okay. Uh, where, where people want to give you suggestions or get in contact uh, with you or maybe uh, find your book or have questions about Lightroom and need help, where would you suggest they get in touch with you or go for help? Yeah, if they need help, have a look on my website and go to the forums link. I spend quite a lot of time on the forum. It's a really friendly little forum. We've got we've got a really nice atmosphere over there. If you want to drop me suggestions about the book, use the contact page on the website and yeah, or find me on Facebook or Twitter. It'd be great right. to get in touch with people. And we will have all those links in the show notes for you to go if you and if somebody needs to find those. Um, your website is what is the website address? Lightroomqueen.com. Lightroomqueen.com. Yep, Lightroom. Yep. Yeah, that's it. Real easy to remember. Lightroomqueen.com. That's that's so much easier than trying to remember my name. <laughs> <laughs> well, your name was not that hard either. <laughs> it's one no, you know but it's easier to forget. If you if you watch the show very much, you know I mess up names all the time. So uh, I didn't mess up yours as far as I know. You did a great job. Thank you <laughs> well, very much. Yeah, Victoria, thank you for coming. You're you're welcome to drop off. And I know it's really late. It's probably was it? Is it? Tell me, it's not two thirty. It's two thirty. It's two thirty. Oh, yep. good gosh. Yeah, it's definitely time for bed. Yep. Well, thank you, Victoria. Oh, thank you thank very you much very for having much. me. Yep. Nice chatting. Bye. Bye. Good night. That was very good, Tim. I wish we had video. Now, probably as soon as she leaves, we'll get video of you. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe not. I think I'm going to purchase her book right after this because it looks pretty good. Yeah, so so what we have left is we're just going to go over a few uh, housekeeping things. So And then we'll, we'll cut out. So I'm going to buy the book, too. And I probably will buy the book in maybe buy a second one or contact her about that and give one of them away. That was, that was a couple of great tips she gave there for free. Um, and we also have a, a two items to give away from the last show we did with Greg. Remember yes. that? Have you played with that Lamenzia yet? I have. No, I didn't even download the update from uh, that, okay. that you said I got to do that also. Oh, my Photoshop I mean, skills stink. So, oh I, god, because I don't I don't go into it much anymore. Yeah, I I was using it. It's it's really cool. I but I just I'm not getting the edits that I want. So I've rewatched his videos and watched his videos. So I'm gonna watch them again. But I have two extra copies. So I'm thinking about doing some kind of um, giveaway where maybe we do that. We do this. I don't know. I got to think about how we're going to do that, but I've got two of those to give away. I'm probably going to do one of her Lightroom book and give that away. So we'll have several things to give away coming up. The month of June, which is coming to a close, is we still it's so open for the photo contest. You know, head over to our um, Facebook group, which is facebook.com slash group slash JPEG to raw. And over there, you can, there's a link at the top of the, the group where you can enter your photo into the photo contest this month's theme is open. If you don't want to join the Facebook group, that's fine. You can go to our website and do it there on our website. There's a link on the website up there on the photo contest where you can go and enter your image into the photo contest. We are putting the editing contest on hold. One of the things we're seeing this, during the summer here is I think a lot of people are distracted and busy and the, the amount of people entering the photo, the editing contest has dropped. So we're going to pause that until probably September. But in the meantime, if you have some images you want to share so that when we start up the editing contest in the future, you want to submit some raws so we can choose from those. So we have a wide selection. It's always good to have a good selection of raw images to edit from people to landscape to whatever flowers that, that we can choose from. Go to our website. There's a link at the, on the upper left-hand corner under photo contest called, called Raw Image Submission and where you can submit raw image or images for us to include in the, um, in the, in the editing contest. Uh, she mentioned her forums. We also ha have forums. 
GayPedroRaw.com slash forums. Getting a little more activity going on over there. I'm all, I'm posting some stuff. I have posted some um, some images. I you know we've had what's his name Rob Sylvan, mm -hmm. from stock photographer. We had him on. I posted some of the the sites where I found my stock photos being used. I've started a whole thread on that. I've also started a new blog. The forums the forums have blogs. I've started a new blog over there, not photography related. It's Mike's Get Fit blog. <laughs> not because Mike's great at being fit, but because Mike needs to get fit. And so I am doing a weekly update. This last week wasn't all that good of news, but I'm doing a weekly update and you can go there, uh, post most Sundays about it. Go there and take a look at it. Once you go to the forums, jpegderaw.com slash forums, then go to blog and you'll see that. If you want to start a blog over there, no politics, no hateful speech, no nothing like that. But if you want to start a blog, photography or not, it's really easy to set up. You can try it yourself or contact me and I'll help you with it and we'll get, get you one started. Um, what else do we have to talk about? Oh, as always, the Amazon link. She talked about her book and if you're going to buy it through Amazon or you're going to buy something else through Amazon. I recently <laughs> bought two more – you can't see it, Tim – but two more batteries – for my drone <laughs> ah, through Amazon. There you go. So if, if you're going to be buying anything through Amazon, go and, and use our link before you go to Amazon, jpegderaw.com slash Amazon. Every time you go to Amazon, use that link to get to Amazon, then go buy what you're going to buy. We get a small credit and we use that to give away things like Victoria's book. Um, and do that. I bought, and it just arrived last night, Tim. I mean, I need to take us off of this just in case it shows something I don't want it to show. Hold on a second. I'm going to just Mike. Smart choice. Attempting to care. That's what my shirt says tonight. Oh, attempting to care. Yeah, I could see it in the, in the little <laughs> screenshot of you. <laughs> yeah. All right, hold on. I'm going to, I'm going to pull something up. Yeah, it did, it did show something I didn't want. Login name. I bought this and it arrived yesterday. The, Hue, the Philips Hue personal wireless lighting. If you're going to buy something like this, photo related, not photo related, remember to use our link, jpegderaw.com slash Amazon. I'm loving those lights. I've also started a blog on our, haven't actually put a post there, but a blog on our, in our forums called um, To Deal With IT. Uh, technology type stuff. That I'll so now, how do you like what I do? How do you like the Hue? Because I mean, that's not cheap, right? No, it's not cheap. And I, you know, after I got them, so this this package here you see in is one hundred ninety dollars. It's one controller which control can control fifty lights, and then it's, it comes with three lights. And then I think if you want to buy more lights, it's sixty dollars a light. So it's not cheap. They will last fifteen to eighteen years, so it'll last a long time. It's an LED, but um. I got to tell you, after I got them, I am hooked. I would love to have more oh, of these. I, th I thought you were going to say you're underwhelmed. Like, really? Yeah, I would, I would love to have more of them. And, you know, I have the Amazon Echo, which is like Siri for the home, and I can control the lights through the Echo. And, you know, say Amazon, turn den light on, and it'll turn the den lights on. So, oh, I like that. Yeah, so that's that's a little bit there. Um what else do I have? If if you have not subscribed to the show, that's the easiest way to get it. We're on Stitcher, Spreaker, iTunes, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, and Podomatic for the audio feed, and then iTunes and YouTube for the video feed. And there's two video feeds. There is uh, video large and video small. So pick the one that is you know fits for you. The video large, of course, has um, is a bigger file. And I think that's it. But I did want to go over one last thing before we close. And that is what I'm doing with, with Amazon. So Amazon has a, you know, you can, if you're, as long as you're a Prime member, you can put up there an unlimited amount of photos, raw images included. Right. And so I started that. And then I decided, you know what? I have this server. And we've talked about how I have crazy amount of servers. I have this server that has... I think it's 11, almost 12 terabyte of storage on it. 
And it's mainly my secondary storage. So this is how crazy I am, Tim. I have my computer with the original, a server, file server with the backup, and that also does out the crash plan, and then another server with another copy of those of those files, plus some other files that I I is the only copy. So um, let's say I used to be a TechNet subscriber, which is a Microsoft thing, and I down I, you could download all kind of operating systems and all kind of software like that. So I've got terabytes of that kind of stuff and terabytes of so do i of, in multiple places yeah of all kind of stuff and i was thinking why not just get rid of all of that stuff off that server save some electricity cost and just upload all of it to amazon they don't resize it their file restrictions must be pretty large the size you know file size wise because i haven't run into a problem yet just get it all up there delete it off my server shut down that server and then if i lose those files because Amazon decides unlimited is not really unlimited or somehow they they lose the file. I mean, if Amazon loses the file, that's something. But if I lose it, then so what? I've lost, I've, I've lost nothing. And where I thought this could fit for the photographer is I know in Kathleen, remember our old host Kathleen? Right. She does this. So, and I know other photographers who do this. They have a backup. They've got a solution and for the backup. But what they do is as a shoot gets a certain age, let's say it's three years or two years or whatever it is, to keep their storage under control, they will delete those those files. And they'll tell the client, hey, I'm only going to keep these for, let's say, two years. They may really keep it for another year, uh, three years total. But then they do delete them to, to save that space. So f in that case, why not just, if you already have an Amazon Prime account, or if you don't, it's only 60 bucks a year, just upload those files to Amazon and then delete them off, right, off that, your computer. That actually wouldn't be a bad move. Yeah. Now, uh, Google has a service too, but they do, if you have a large enough file, they'll resize that file, so, which I don't like. I don't want them editing the file at all. So upload that stuff to Amazon, delete it off your computer if you, if you want to do that. And then you have it there. And let's say, I, I, I know in the case of at least one photographer, they, did, they had deleted the stuff. And then someone in that shoot uh, died. And they came back to the photographer and said, hey, would, do you have any photos that we can use? They did have something else they were able to use. But from that shoot they wanted to use it for, they were not able to. So this would potentially be a, uh, a way to save it. So that's the good side. On the downside, it is not a true backup solution. It is manual. You have to tell it, take these files, upload them to Amazon. There's, there's no way for you to say, watch this folder, and if anything changes, back it up. The other, and there's two ways to send it to Amazon. One is through their web client, so you're using a browser, and the other is you download their desktop um, little app. It's not a full program, it's, and it's, it's very feature-lacking uh, is a way to say. Um, the web client works okay. It has a limit of how many, the, the, about the file size you can send. I think it's like a two gig files the maximum, and the number of files you can send at one time. And then I've had it, crash on me. I'm using Chrome. I've had, I've come in a number of times and that Chrome tab has crashed. So I had to restart it over again. So there's a problem there. But the desktop client, you can't tell it to go to a specific folder. So what I do is make it go to the main folder and then move them over manually myself when they're done. That has not crashed on me. That's worked well. Um, so, so far I'm up to one and a half terabyte uh, of stuff I've uploaded there. It's not bad. And uh, I'm kind of cheating. And that I have my computer, not right now because we're, we're streaming, I have my computer uploading here at home, and I took a hard drive to work with a full of stuff I want to upload, and I have that computer uploading too. Wow. So I'm uploading twice there. That's because that's you're the tech guy at work. Yeah, before you do it at work, make sure you're okay to do it at work. Uh, and if you have bandwidth caps at home or at work, that may be an issue there too. They do seem to be putting a governor or a cap or something on it because at work I got a really fast speed and I think I'm still only uploading at five to 10 megabits a second. So it's not a, f a full stream where you can get it up there. If you have a lot of information, if you have a lot of information, it's going to take you a while to get it up there. Um, is there a link to the Amazon photo thing? So if I go to Amazon, let me pull it back up. Let me go to Amazon and then I... I'm logged into my account and I go to cloud drive. So under 
your account, you go to Cloud Drive, it should then show you where that is. If, and and if you have, if you're an Amazon Prime member, you'll have <laughs> unlimited photos. You won't have unlimited files. Even if you're a Prime member, you have to pay for the unlimited files. So now mine shows Prime photos and then unlimited everything. Now I'm a Prime member, so I'm on the Prime photos. You are. So like in my case, I've started the free, uh, I think it's a 90 day trial of unlimited everything. This is at 1.4 terabyte up there. I thought I had more than that, but um, for unlimited everything, I think it is 59.99. Hopefully that yeah, answers I'm gonna, the question. Because I have on here, it shows, see now here it shows, Video and file ups are paused because you are out of additional storage. Yeah. It's like, but why? I am a Prime member. I don't get that. Well, now you said videos. How much? Vi no, video and, video and file uploads are paused because you are out of additional storage. Photos will continue to upload. Right. That, that's the case. So if you are a Prime member, what you get is unlimited photo uploads, both raw and JPEG, but only five gig of everything else oh so and you know what I, I bet you within my catalog uh, I, since my uh, camera takes video I have video files within that that's what that problem is yeah so for if all you want to do is, is photos then it is free unlimited storage for a pri if you already have prime and that is again jpegs raws uh, I think maybe tiff dngs stuff like that I'm not quite sure on the tiff but I know dng raw and um all right, I'm going to have to look at this tomorrow. So, yeah, if you're a Prime member, the photo side is is unlimited for for free. It's an ad, it's added with your Prime membership. If you want to do other files, including video, then you're limited to five gig. And if you want more than that, then you got to go with the the sixty dollars a year. You know, if if you so in this case, if you're the, if you're Kathleen, and you're deleting files after a certain age, I'm not positive she still does that, but I know back a few years ago when she was on the show, she did. If you're deleting those files and you're a Prime member, you don't have to pay anything else. Just upload those files uh, to Amazon and then delete them off once you're confirmed they're up there. Yep. Delete them off locally. You just pay attention. If you have a data cat with your internet provider, you may have some issues there. I don't, so that, that's fortunate. Okay, that, that makes sense. I like that. Good. All right. I think that is a wrap. We are over the um well over the hour mark so guys out in chat thank you for coming we'll hang out for a little bit of post show here thank you for coming so glad we got victoria on i know she's crazy busy and you know while it seems like a small world and we can connect like this the when we do connect we realize how it's not quite so small and that she was up to 2 30 with us so we really yep. really appreciate her staying up that late with us uh we're gonna not have a show next week and then the week after next we have a guest coming on, I think, Kevin the Kid or something like that. Something crazy. It'll be a crazy show. So until two weeks from now, keep it raw. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.